OpenAI just released a brand new feature within ChatGPT that they call in Canvas. And this improves the way that you work together with ChatGPT in a seamless manner. It is beautiful, I really like it. In this video, we're gonna to touch on all of the new components and perhaps why it's making me now drop Claude and its artifacts feature to go back to GPT completely. I'll leave a link to the entire blog post that OpenAI have created about Canvas so you can read it at your own time. However, now I just wanna show you the features, the new features and functionalities you have available to you with Canvas, both for writing and for create and generating code. And also at the end, I'll show you three features that have been released that aren't in Canvas, but have been released to ChatGPT that almost no one is talking about. And I'm really surprised why not, because they're extremely useful. The last one is really surprising. If you are paying for ChatGPT, the $20 a month, and you click down on the model selection, you'll see that below GPT 4.0, you'll see here, GPT 4.0 with Canvas. Right now it's in beta mode, it's only available for those who are paying, but the way that OpenAI works, they're probably going to allow free users to access this. I'm gonna go GBTO with 4O with Canvas. For this example, I'm gonna turn an old meeting with a prompt engineering expert guess, which is part of the meetings that we hold uh, within our AI ranking community, but I'll tell you more about that in a second. So I have the whole transcript that's provided with me from Fathom, a really handy tool. Again, it's free. I'll leave a link to Fathom in the video description below as well. It's just a great tool that comes into your meetings and records and transcribes everything. This meeting was particularly insightful. So what I wanna do is use Canvas to create a blog post from the most interesting components of that live Q&A. I have it now pasted in my clipboard. Now I'm just gonna tell GPT 4.0 with Canvas to find the most interesting points within the conversation and turn that into a helpful blog post. So I've got everything here and I've just pasted the hour and 15 long minute uh, <laughs> transcription, but GPT 4.0 can handle it more than okay. And now you can see that I've started creating my blog post here. Key takeaways from Sam Stuntspot Walker. I'll, I'll leave a link to all of Sam's stuff. He's fantastic as well. If you wanna explore prompt engineering a little bit more serious, I'd highly recommend you check his stuff out. So I've got the blog post here and it's already formatted quite nicely, but you can see that it's opened the whole component to a brand new user interface. So if I go all the way down to where that was, I can open my little canvas in which is the blog post that we're writing about. So it already kind of takes you into a brand new interface. A little bit like artifacts as well, but it's a little bit different as well. I've got my canvas open here, and now I can see that on the right-hand side, I've got a couple of things here that I can use to amend this. And the main valuable thing and more efficient thing that you have from this now is that, let's say I don't like the introduction and maybe uh, the conclusion. I would have to ask GPT to, hey, can you, I like this, but can you please change the introduction? to include X and the conclusion to include Y. It would then have to write the whole thing again for you to read it and see if you're happy with it. Taking a lot of time and conversations and credits and all those things. Now, all I need to do is if I hover over here, I can ask GPT about this certain section, or you can see on the right hand side of each individual sentence, I can also ask GPT to edit, to explain it, or to do other things here for it. So I'm gonna say here, um, just to explain this section in detail. And now it's gonna come on the bottom hand side corner and explain that section that it's written about right away. So then I can go back and forth and understand that a little bit. If I get out of that and go to the bottom right here, I've got these lovely little options, which is suggest edits, adjust the length, reading level, add final polish and add emojis, which I think is funny, but not that very useful. If we click on the first one here and go suggest edits, it's going to read through the whole blog post that it just generated and find where it thinks it could improve upon the writing. And it'll highlight those a little bit like you can in Google Docs and you can suggest edits, very, very similar. So here, let's see, uh, Sam is creating that prompt. Uh, Sam said that creating prompt isn't about finding the one perfect way to do it. Instead, it's about trying different ways and adapting on your prompts based on how the model responds. And here, the suggestion GPT is telling me to consider adding specific examples of a prompt iteration to make the process to this point more concrete. That's perfect, I'll apply that. So you see here, it'll start making that change live here. Boom, and just for that sentence, that's such a, 
clever way to do this. I don't have to rewrite this entire thing. I can go through and see the edits that it's other edits that have suggested it. And if I don't like the suggestion, I can just click the cross button and it won't suggest that at all. I can look all the way down and see what other suggestions it's made. This is a strong statement. I'm gonna elaborate on that. I'll click on that and click apply and just see it make that change only in that section where it's appropriate for it to do so. And perfect, so now I've added some suggestions to my writing. Well, what else can I do as well with a new canvas feature? I can go to the suggest edits and I can adjust the length with a little slider as well, which I find really interesting. So when it comes to SEO, because that's all this, what this channel is about, length doesn't really mean more ranking or it's gonna be a higher or a better blog. If the content is really complex and it needs a lot of length to be able to explain it, then for sure, make it a little bit longer. But most of the time, you're gonna see better results when you rank or when you write the content, when you make it shorter and you condense everything, giving the user the information right away. So I'm actually going to make it a little bit shorter and you'll see that it starts rewriting the entire blog post right in front of our eyes to make it a little bit shorter. Perfect, I wanna to get to the point, I wanna give you the value right away. Already a much shorter blog here. And finally, in the other sections here, I can adjust the reading level. That's a very, very easy and smart thing to do. Whilst you could do this with a, with a prompt easily, uh, I like the way they've done it and that kind of speaks to how important changing the reading level is for certain occasions. Well, my recommendation is, is probably keeping it at a middle school level because the majority of people online only really read at that level. We've done these tests and the more complicated you write things, unless you're a PhD student and therefore you need to adjust the reading level to a graduate school or a PhD, I would leave it at middle school or even high school. But let's go to high school and see what happens. In a recent session with Q&A, let's see if this first sentence changes too much. Oh, just makes it a lot more kind of easily to read, to be honest. And it kind of defines or explains its changes that it's done on the left-hand side corner, much like Claude Artifacts does as well. The add a final polish button is quite nice. If I click that, it'll go through it again, review it and see where it can make changes just to make it that little bit nicer as well. A really nice touch. Again, you could probably do this with a really nice prompt that you've been using as well. So they haven't reinvented the wheel when it comes to the functionalities, but it just makes it very easy and the user experience is a lot nicer. And the last one, just for, because we can do it, let's add some emojis. And then I'm gonna show you how you can go back to the previous variation because I don't specifically think that adding emojis in a prompt like this would be such a good idea. But let's do it and then we'll show you the other functionality. So as you can see, it's adding the appropriate emojis all throughout the blog content, which that's your thing, hey, go for it. But I'm gonna say, mm, I don't really like that version. Up in the top right corner, there is a previous version button and that takes you to the previous variation of that content. I'm going to restore to this version so now I can make the edits again. Really, really good. I can also copy the entire document that we're working within the canvas, right? Because this is a canvas within a conversation. I can re-leave that by the way, remember? I can also go back to it and if I copy it, let's see what it looks like when you paste it in a Google Doc. You can see here that it's in a markdown format, which it generally does. If you don't like that and you want it to be copied and pasted so that it looks nice right away on your Google Doc, you actually need to copy the entire thing and then paste it into Google Docs and now you can see that it's formatted appropriately. But you probably don't need to do that anymore because not only can you amend it within prompts, but if I want to add components myself within that and write it, I can. Sam was a cool guy, for example. So I'm writing kind of right next to in collaboration with ChatGPT in a much better way. So we've gone through all the components when it comes to copywriting. Really good for SEO to help you write your blogs a lot quicker with a lot more flexibility. And I think it's going to generate, it's gonna help you write in a much more natural manner. It's just gonna be a nicer way to collaborate with GPT when you're writing with it. And it's gonna feel more of a collaboration as opposed to it doing your work, you double checking it and going back and forth like this. Anyway. Let's try something new and let's try the coding capabilities with Canvas as well. I'm gonna start a new conversation and what we're going to do is create a build splitting app that we've done with Claude because I also wanna see you show you the difference of the coding capabilities of GPT-40 as opposed to Claude as well. I've got a prompt here to ask it to code it a 
web splitting, a bill splitting app in HTML5. Let's read it and then hit enter and see what happens. Let's code a web app in HTML5 that I can use the, it will be a bill splitting app. I should be able to add in the total bill and how much the tip is. Then I can add how many users the app and the ad will, the app will need to split all these into. I should be able to name all the users and select a slider with a percentage to indicate how much each of them own, right? Pretty simple, but useful app. So now we've got the same canvas feature, but because it's writing code, you can see in the right hand corner when this is finished that you won't get the same components that we did when we were writing a normal blog post. The choices will be much more different. And here we've got code review, port to a language, find bugs, add logs, and even add comments. So let's just test the code as it is, right? I'm going to save this and open it up in my web browser so I can show you if this works or not. So this is the app that GPT-40 has created me. Let's enter the bill amount to 999, enter the tip percentage, let's add 15. Number of users, let's say we're splitting it between five people, add users, user one, 10%, user two, Right, 15%, that's pretty cool. User three, 23%, user four, 27. Uh, let's calculate the split, and it's telling us here, whoop. So it's nearly there, it's kind of telling us how much, but I don't get the end amount here. So let's see if we can tell it to amend that within the Canvas section. Or actually, better yet, let's just ask it to review the code and see if it can find the error that we found. Perfect, so much like the rewriting aspect or the suggestion on what you should do to improve the blog post before I've added we it's added some recommendations on the code consider converting numbers to an integrate don't know what that means instead of directly modifying it in HTML create new elements sure let's apply that let's look at some others it's checking everything again and again as you can see I'm no developer so I don't really know what's happening here I just know that sometimes the input works sometimes it doesn't and I need to tell it that it should redo it again because it didn't work so it's updated a couple of things without doing the other amendments let's just try this again and see what happens let's enter a random number there 10% number of users users beautiful calculate the split but it seems to be breaking every time I'm gonna tell it to generally say, uh, I can't see how much each individual owes at the end. I think the smart thing about this, we can see it amending the sections that it only needs to amend. Really good usability. I'm wondering if that's also saving them API calls to this front end, but who knows. You can see that I'm still not getting my last output, the calculation of, of the numbers, but that might be my poor explanation of what I want. For reference though, really quickly, I practically did the exact same thing for with Claude AI and then understood everything right away. So if I change here, for example, the output, it understands how much each individual owns, owes, and it understood right away that if one individual owes needs to pay more, the rest automatically need to pay less. Something that I didn't think about. Obviously GPT didn't either, but I just wanted to show you, you know, in that sense, Claude AI is still such a good coding companion. Perfect, let's try the other components here to find bugs and it should go through the whole code itself and review it again line by line. This would be really, really useful if I were, if I were developing an application and I could, and I wanna make sure that there's no errors in it, I can paste the whole code in here and it'll check all the errors. Not only that, but I can also port to another language, meaning I can change it to another language here. So for example, to uh, C++, Python, JavaScript, Java, maybe JavaScript, let's see what happens. I don't know if you could do this in JavaScript, but maybe you can. It seems like JavaScript might work, but I don't know enough to, and I don't wanna show you that right now because that's not about this, that's not about this application. So I've changed it and let's see if I can also add some logs to the code. And finally, I can add some comments so that we all understand what each individual part of the code is doing. Something that you, everyone should do, but I feel like a lot of people don't as well. Perfect, and you see here the code added clear any existing inputs, clear using face, it's perfect. It tells you what each component does nice and tidy a really useful tool for somebody that codes more i don't enough i like the other version uh for just for copywriting but regardless i think this will be something used a lot more now it's probably going to make a lot of people switch 
from Claude to GPT, although you saw the coding capabilities of either side by side and Claude still is pretty good for coding. There's a couple of things that you should know about as well that a lot of people aren't talking about. If I start a brand new conversation without GPT-4 or a Canvas 2, it's just this normal one, these last features, I don't know why not enough people are talking about it. If I press forward slash, now I can go right away and if I click the first one, I can use DALI, which is fine. I would have to prompt it a little bit more previously, but now I can just do it right away. I can search the web. It seems like they've sneakily just released GPT search within the chats and not really told anyone about it. And within a chat, I can go to reason right away, which I think is really, really helpful. So if I go to picture right away, uh, create elephant in the Patagonia. Why not? And then understands right away that I'm requesting an image. Otherwise, I'll probably get more of a question as well. <laughs> there you go. That's not bad. And then I can ask it now to search the web and you can see that the other preview option is no longer available because that's just in the first conversation or to keep it nice and tidy. So let's go and search the web for the latest AI news published today. So today, Microsoft new GPT for real time preview. Microsoft has launched a new beta and I have a summary of today's news for GPT. I think they're still testing this out because not everything is 100% searchable. I would still probably use perplexity over GPT search functionality at the moment, but it's still really cool and it still works 90% of the time, but sometimes it gets a little bit confused as well. That's gonna be a whole new video of us using search GPT correctly to maximize your search engine optimization. And that's it. There are, those are all the new components that I think you should be aware of. And if you want to learn how to use all of these tools to maximize your marketing and your search engine optimization. So you rank your website number one with the help of artificial intelligence, meaning that you do it in a much more effective and efficient manner. I suggest you check out our group, the AI Ranking Community. We've got a free and a premium one. So if you want to just kind of dip your toes into the water with a community of like-minded people that want to learn how to maximize all these tools, I'll leave a link to both resources below. Within the premium community, we've got the classroom so you know where to get started. We have all the prompts, all the tools, the AI powered SEO masterclass that will tell you everything you need to know about how to rank with artificial intelligence, AI fundamentals so you can you can speed run the learning of your AI knowledge as well as automations as well. Uh, we even have a support team there for you. And obviously we meet twice a week. So if you have any questions, are you having any issues that you wanna to talk to like-minded people that might know a little bit more and can help you out, that's a perfect place to be at as well. A really growing community, I absolutely love it. If you wanna be a part of that, I suggest you check that out in the links in the video description below. And it's a great time to join now the premium community as well because the price will be going up at the end of the month. But if you join now, you'll be you'll be grandfathered in at the price forever. Let me know what you thought of the new GPT Canvas. How are you using it? Do you like it? Would you go now if you're using Claude just, just to use Canvas? If so, why? Let me know. Just if you like this video, leave me a comment and a little subscribe.